Hello and welcome to this short clip on how to balance equations using oxidation numbers. There's two main applications of this skill. The first one is writing a half equation from oxidation numbers, and the second one is writing a full balanced redox equation from oxidation numbers. So I'll take them one at a time. So the first example would be something like construct a half equation for the conversion of um, MnO2 in acidic conditions to Mn2+. So the first step is to write out what you know, assigning oxidation numbers as you go. So we know that we've got acidic conditions, so we know there's going to be H+. Plus. We know that oxygen has a oxidation number of minus 2. So 2 of them is going to be minus 4. So that, that's why the manganese in MnO2 is plus 4. We also know that there are two oxygens that have to be used up somehow. We can assume that they're turned into water. So we put 2H2O on the right hand side. So the next thing to do is to work out the oxidation number changes and assign electrons accordingly. If it's a reduction, the electrons will be gained. If it's an oxidation, the electrons will be lost and be on the right hand side. So the oxidation number has decreased by 2, so it's a reduction. Therefore you need to gain 2 electrons. And finally what you do is you balance the species and the charges both sides. Now going back a minute or so, you'll remember that we actually put two waters on the right hand side. That requires four hydrogens. So we have to put a four in front of the H plus to balance it. And to balance the charges, I'm just going to scrub out where I've written plus four. Because that's obviously not a charge as such, it's an oxidation number. So on the right hand side it's 2 plus overall, on the left hand side you've got 4 pluses and 2 minuses which is also 2 plus overall. So this is now balanced. So writing a redox equation from oxidation numbers is often worded in this manner. This would be worth about 3 marks or so in an exam. So what we do is exactly the same as what we did at the top. That is write out what you know and we can assign oxidation numbers as well. And I've written the oxidation numbers for everything, but I've only written the things that change oxidation number in black, so we can follow them as we go. So we can see that lead is reduced and chlorine is oxidized. So lead is reduced by two oxidation numbers, going from plus four to plus two and chlorine is oxidised by one oxidation number. It's gone up from minus one to zero. But for lead to be reduced by two oxidation numbers, chlorine would have to be oxidised by one oxidation number twice. So the process where that happens is with the HCl. So that process needs to happen twice. But you've also got to bear in mind that you've got two oxygens on the left hand side on the lead oxide that have to be used up somehow. And just like we did in the first technique at the top of the page, we use those up using water. So to balance it what we have to do is actually multiply the HCl by 4. So you might be thinking, how come he's just said that it has to happen twice and now he's multiplied it by 4? If you look closely Within those four chlorines that are in the four HCLs, only two of them actually get oxidized. The other two remain the same because two of them end up in PbCl2. And if you look at the oxidation numbers, they don't change there, do they? So you need to make sure that you're bearing that in mind as well. So because this second technique is slightly trickier, we'll do another one. So this one says, hydrogen bromide, HBr, reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid to produce bromine, Br2, sulfur dioxide, SO2, and one other product. And I've just realised I forgot to put H2SO4 in, sorry about that, they probably would give you H2SO4 in the question. So let's write up what we know first of all. Okay, let's assign oxidation numbers. I'm going to write the ones out for things that don't change first of all. So hydrogen doesn't seem to change at this point. We don't know what the other product is on the right-hand side, first of all. So we can just put 
plus 1 for the hydrogens to start with. And we can put in minus 2s for the oxygen. And we can put in the oxidation states for bromine and for sulfur. That's where the change is happening, obviously. So we can see that bromine is being oxidised and sulfur is being reduced. So in the same way that we did it before, sulfur is reduced by two oxidation numbers, but bromine is oxidised by one oxidation number. So for those two processes to balance each other out, the oxidation of bromine must happen twice. So we can put a 2 in front of the HBr. Now instantly this balances the bromines, so that does that job for us. To check how many, uh, what we might have to do with the oxygens in H2SO4, we have four oxygens in H2SO4. We also haven't got rid of any hydrogens on the right hand side. So it should come as no surprise that water comes to the rescue here. So that gives us two lots of water on the right hand side. And the final thing to do is to check any species and charges. Now don't forget the Pluses and minuses are written above each of the species are just oxidation numbers. They're not charges. So that must mean the charges are balanced already because all of the species you've got are neutral. However, what we've got to do is do the species balance. So doing the hydrogens first of all, you have four on the left and four on the right. So hydrogen is balanced. Let's do bromine now you can obviously see that that's balanced as well. Let's do sulphur. That too is balanced. Finally, let's do oxygen. And that too is balanced. So, job done. Now, it might be a good idea to go and practice some examples from your textbook, uh, because, like I said earlier, this can be slightly tricky because it's a slightly different way of balancing equations than you're used to from GCSE or perhaps even your first year of A-level chemistry. This is very much an A2 skill, but it works beautifully every single time. So once you've done it a few times, you'll find it a very useful tool for balancing oxidation and reduction equations in exam questions. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your time and see you soon.